The Last Airbender. So The Last Airbender is a live-action adaptation of the animated series Avatar The Last Airbender. This movie was directed by Midnight Shyamalong. It stars a bunch of actors that I've never heard of nor do I care about, aside from the guy who played Zuko. So the story behind this is that it's set in a world where a selected amount of people can bend certain elements, fire, water, earth, and air. However, there is one person who can bend all four elements, who's known as the Avatar. Every time an Avatar dies or passes away, a new one is born back into the world instantly. Our young Ang, or in this case, Ang, throws himself in a ball of ice underwater as a defense reaction to survive a fierce storm. He stayed frozen for a hundred years. During that time, the Fire Nation raids war on the world and pretty much wins or is winning. By the way, half of that information isn't explained in this movie. I know it from the animation. Ung is awoken by two kids, Katara and Saka, brother and sister. This is where our film opens and begins. This is also where the film should have ended because for the first few minutes of the film it was actually pretty good. From this point on, this is where bad dialogue and acting comes into play. I mean, Katara, do not hit that sphere. No, seriously, that's what it sounds like. I mean, I may be exaggerating it, but it's scripted so badly. I've... Here, look, I'll just play the clip for you. Katara, do not hit that sphere. At first, I was hoping maybe it was just this one shot and hopefully the rest of the film isn't this bad. Yet again, I was wrong. I could sit here and point out parts of the film I hated, but seriously, that'll take way too long. How long? Well, the entire fucking film long. That's how long. I've never done this before in a cinema, but for the entire film, I was watching it with my hand over my face. In other words, I was face palming and looking through the film through my fingers. It was that bad. I was face palming. And the thing is, I wasn't the only one doing it. Every now and again in scenes where like really white and bright and stuff, I would look around the cinemas and I'm seeing other people like squirming in their seats and stuff because it was so fucking bad. It was that bad. When the movie finished and the cinema lit up, I swear to fuck, there was less than half the people there was at the end of the film than there was at the start of the film. People were obviously walking out during the movie and they had a good reason to. They were the smart ones. I was the dumb one. What's even more gut-wrenching about this film is that I've seen kids who have stolen their parents parents' cameras, gone into their backyard and made a crappy action short to put up onto YouTube with better acting, better camera shots, and even good at telling the story they're trying to tell despite there being none. This film has horrible pacing, absolutely no character development, and no, someone narrating it doesn't count. My brother and the princess became friends right away. Now, I would say the actors can't act, but I've seen them in other films, and they actually did pretty decent, if not great. It wasn't until I remembered, wait, this guy also directed The Happening, which also has great actors acting shitty. Let's not forget about After Earth, shall we? So I can't blame the actors by the fact that the director simply didn't direct them. The choreographing in this film was also shit. Yes, it did look impressive, but to bend an element, you had to pretty much pin in a cheat code like in a game. Left, right, up, down, left, right, up, down, Square, triangle, square, triangle, L1, L2, R1, R2, and WHABANG! There goes a pebble flying half the speed of paint drying across the screen. There's this one shot, I kid you not. Ung is about to bend air at this Fire Nation warrior. It takes Ung about four seconds to fire his attack. During that time, this warrior does nothing but dance with nothing. Seriously, he did nothing. He had a fucking sword in his hand. He could have at least thrown it, apart from just blabbering there like nothing. Thing. Now, despite it all, I will have to give the film credit where credit is due. The visual effects, yes, weren't the greatest, but they weren't bad either. The casting did have a few problems here and there, but I didn't really mind it too much. Zuko's casting, I thought, was great. Now, I know fans of the cartoon are gonna go, WRONG! YOU'RE WRONG! But it's what I thought, you know, it could have been worse. I actually like the casting for Zuko, that's just my personal opinion. The sets that were built in this film were magnificent. It really felt like as if this world was alive. The costumes were were another thing. Even though they weren't exactly like the animation, they looked practical and they looked amazing. I love the costumes in this. One big thing I do have to point out about this film is the music. I mean, seriously, have you heard the music of this film? It's amazing! It fits the world so damn well, and props to James Newton Howard for creating such a great, great soundtrack. Sadly, poor scripting, bad pacing, and everything else about this film isn't enough to save it. I personally will give the film some credit as it made me like the idea of bending the elements in a martial arts 
daft kind of way, as aside from flicking the wrist as you see in other superpower like movies. After watching the animation, I then understood why people got the shits over this film. The film completely ignored what made the animation what I'd happily say would be the best animated series of all time. The animation was great because of the characters. Each character served a purpose in the story. We got to see these kids turn into essentially young adults and watch them learn from their mistakes. Something we all run into in our lives. We don't fall in love with the characters by how many boob shots they have or how many panty shots they have like an anime. We fall in love with these characters characters by who they are and what they accomplish. Everything makes sense. No character is there for fan service. Everything is there for a reason. Even if it doesn't seem like much, it still plays a huge role. I mean, General Iroh, for example, or Uncle Iroh in this case. Who doesn't have a great deal of respect to this guy at the end of the series? What makes this film so heartbreaking is that if it was done right, it could have been the next Star Wars, or the next Harry Potter, or the next Lord of the Rings, the next big series that we would all be looking forward to. I honestly think that they should try again. Get someone who has experience with working with children and making fantasy films. I would rather have two movies explaining one season minimum than just having one movie per season. This is a story that has to be told and so many people don't watch the animation because it looks too childish. If you're one of those people, start from season two. I guarantee you it is definitely going to be worth your time. I give The Last Airbender a zero out of five stars to be the first film to have me still fucking bitching about it for you later and most likely for the rest of my fucking life. So The Last Airbender, what did you think about it? Also, this is my first time reviewing something. Let me know what you thought as well in the comment section below.